Let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy S8. So the Samsung Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge are Samsung's most successful smartphones. Sales went through the roof when compared to the S5 or the S6, and that's because the S7 Edge not only looks amazing, I mean just take a look at how awesome this thing looks, but also comes with an amazing display, the best display on any smartphone at the moment out there, a really really good camera, and overall this is still one of the best Android smartphones it can currently get, especially now that the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 is dead. But Samsung's already working on the next Galaxy device, the Samsung Galaxy S8. And by the way, the S8 is due to launch in less than four months. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty close. So hey everyone, welcome to the Zenoftech, I'm Daniel. And as always, welcome to my leaks and rumors series, the series in which I discuss in detail everything you need to know about an upcoming device. And in this episode, I'll be covering the Samsung Galaxy S8. So grab your popcorn because this is going to be a pretty long video. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, so starting off with section number one, we have the design. So how is the Samsung Galaxy S8 going to look like? Well, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge was and still is, at least in my opinion, the best looking smartphone ever. I mean, just take a look at how awesome and how futuristic the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge look like. And when you compare the S7 Edge to the iPhone 7 or the Google Pixel, just take a look at how small the bezels on the S7 Edge are, also how modern and how futuristic it looks compared to especially the Google Pixel. What do you guys think of the S7 Edge's design? I definitely think that this is currently the best designed smartphone on the market. But the S7 Edge, even though it has an amazing design, it wasn't a complete redesign from the S6. The S7 was more of like a Samsung Galaxy S6s, so to say, so it had almost the same design with some very minor design tweaks. It also had the exact same Quad HD AMOLED display, however, we did get an improved camera, we did get better specs, we also got water resistance and an SD card expansion. But other than that, we didn't get to see any big changes, especially when it came to the design. Now, in terms of the S8's design, unlike the S7, the S8 is going to come with a new design, with a full redesign actually, so the design is going to be a pretty big change. And according to reports, the S8 has been in production even before the Note 7 even launched. And the code names for the S8 are SMG950 and SMG955. SMG. So yeah, there are going to be two separate models of the S8, which I'll be covering in a second. And by the way, fun fact, the codename for the S7 was actually SMG930 instead of 940, and that's because 4 is actually a bad luck number in South Korea, so that's why the S8 is going to be called 950 instead of 940. And according to Avon Blast, most of you probably know him by Eve Leaks, he's a huge leaker. Guess which other device is also in production, the N950. So it seems like the Note lineup might not be completely dead after all. Who's excited for the Note 8? in 2017. So we know the code names, now what about the actual design? So there have been a lot of reports suggesting that the S8 is going to be completely or almost completely bezel-less. So the screen to body ratio is supposedly going to be 90%, that's insane, the screen to body ratio of 90%, this is the iPhone 7 Plus, which yeah, it has some pretty huge bezels, and this one has a screen to body ratio of 70, actually 67%, so... Yeah. Some of you might have heard of the Xiaomi Mi Mix. This one has a 91% screen to body ratio and this one simply looks insane. So when it comes to the bezel sizes, the S8 is going to be pretty similar to the Xiaomi Mi Mix and that's just awesome. Now the Mi Mix does have a pretty thick bottom bezel, so just take that bottom bezel, divide it by two, add one part to the top and one to the bottom, curve the display and this is most likely how the Samsung Galaxy S8 is going to look like. Now the S7 Edge already has some really thin bezels, so even thinner bezels would look even better. The build of the phone is still going to be exactly like on the S7 Edge, so this means glass on both the front and the back, and then the aluminum frame that surrounds the whole phone. Now there have been quite a lot of reports suggesting that a home button on the S8 is going away completely. Now at first, some initial reports suggested that the home button was going to be replaced by a force touch home button just like we have on the iPhone 7, but now apparently because of those really thin bezels, the home button is going away entirely. And Samsung actually has a couple of patents on this, a force touch home button that's actually situated beneath the display. Okay, so some of you might be wondering why would Samsung do such a thing when they can simply do something like on the Google Pixel, just have on-screen buttons. Well, Samsung apparently still wants to have a fingerprint reader on the front, and that's also going to be included in the display panel as well. And yet, there are a couple of patents from Samsung suggesting just this, a fingerprint reader inside the display panel. How awesome would that be? Okay, so this is currently everything we know in terms of the design. Now, what about the display itself? So in terms of the display, Samsung is apparently going to have a curved display on both models of the S8, so on both the regular S8 and on the larger 
S8 Edge. Now some reports suggest that we would have the exact same screen size as on the S7 and the S7 Edge. So an S8 with a 5.1 inch display and then an S8 Plus with a 5.5 inches display. And other reports suggest that the S8 would actually come with a larger screen size as the S7. So a 5.7 inch display on the regular model and then a 6.2 inches display on the larger one. And even though this seems kind of extreme, this is personally what I believe as well. And that's because the S7 Edge actually greatly outsold the S7, the regular 7. So removing the 5.1 inch model completely would actually make quite a lot of sense. And then if you take a look at the S7 Edge, this one comes with a 5.5 inch display. And then if you thin out the bezels, you can actually get a 5.7 inch display in the exact same form factor. And so the display technology, the display panels themselves, it's going to be the exact same technology as we have on the S7 and the S7 Edge, so super AMOLED displays. As for the display resolution, this is actually going to be the S8's top selling feature apart from the design. So yeah, we are expecting to see a 4K display on both the S8 and on the S8 Plus, so 3840 by 2160 that's insane. This is going to be amazing for VR. This is actually going to be the best VR experience in terms of resolution, because if you take a look at the S7 Edge, this one comes with a Quad HD display, so it's pretty high resolution, 534 ppi, and that's 2560 by 1440. But yeah, even with this amount of resolution, you can easily still see the pixels. They're about the size of a one pence coin, and same goes for your Oculus Rift, and the HTC Vive, they have a resolution of 2160 by 1200, I believe. So yeah, very, very similar to the experience in terms of resolution of the S7 Edge. And just in case you're wondering if the S8 will actually be able to drive a 4K display at 60 Hertz, well, the Snapdragon 820 can already do that 4K at 60 Hertz in the Snapdragon 820. And by the way, back in March, Samsung actually showed a 5.5 inches Quad HD display, and this one was rocking a PPI of 808. So it's really likely that Samsung will actually use the exact same display panel in the S8. As for the PPI, a display of that resolution would actually give you 801 ppi on a 5.5 inches display and i believe it's 772 on a 5.7 inches display so that's insane considering the fact that the s7 edge came with 534 so yeah this thing is going to be amazing in vr and finally in terms of the display glass itself we are expecting to see gorilla glass 5 just like we had on the note 7 and gorilla glass 5 can actually sustain drops of up to 1.6 meters concrete. And according to Corning, which is the manufacturer of Gorilla Glass, phones equipped with Gorilla Glass 5 actually have an 80% chance of surviving that 1.6 meter of concrete on concrete drop. So yeah, pretty amazing. Finally, moving on to section number three, we have the actual specs. Told you this was going to be a pretty long video. Okay, so in terms of the amount of RAM, on the S7 and on the S7 Edge, we had 4 gigabytes of RAM, and on the S8, we are expecting to see 6 gigabytes of RAM. And this is going to be the version for the international market. There's also going to be a version for the Asian market, and that one is supposedly going to come with 8 gigabytes of RAM. So S8 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, that would actually make a lot of sense. Now, in terms of the actual processor, on the S7 and on the S7 Edge, we had the Exynos 8890. And there was actually a lot of controversy between this and the Snapdragon version. The Exynos model was indeed a bit faster when it came to launching apps and overall fluidity. And now with the Samsung Galaxy S8, we are going to see a brand new 10 nanometer process and also a brand new chip architecture. So smaller, faster, and also a more efficient architecture. Now, one possibility for this would actually be the brand new Exynos ADH95. And since this is based on a smaller 10 nanometer process, the chip, the entire chip itself is going to be about 30% smaller, about 30 to 40%, 40% better in performance, and about 40% better when it comes to power consumption. Now, Samsung says that the new Exynos ADA95 actually comes with a brand new image signal processor or ISP. And this new ISP also features 70% improved image processing. So this means that when you take photos, when you take burst shots or HDR photos, those images will be processed a lot faster. Now, same as with the Exynos ADA90, the Exynos ADA95 is coming with eight cores. So two, actually four high performance cores and four low performance cores. And apparently these four high performance cores can actually get up to three gigahertz in speed each. So yeah, this is going to be a really fast processor. And speaking of performance, the Geekbench scores have been apparently leaked. 2301 for a single core score and 7019 for the multi-core. So these are some insane scores, especially when it comes to the multi-core. And that actually makes a lot of sense because this is essentially an octa-core processor. I mean, you have four high performance cores when compared to the iPhone 7, which only has two high performance cores. But still, the iPhone 7 is still ahead when you take a look at a single core score, 3448 and 5609. Yeah, in terms of single core, a pretty big difference between the S8 and the iPhone 7. Now, in terms of the GPU, we are expecting to see the new ARM Mali G71. This also supports the new Vulkan API, OpenES 3.2, and overall has twice the performance when it comes to graphical performance than the old Mali T, I think it was 8880. Yeah, that was the model that was used in the S7 and the S7 Edge, the Exynos models. 
And yeah, twice the graphical performance is a pretty huge number, but you actually need that performance in order to drive that 4K display. So this Exynos 8895 is going to be the model for all the international versions of the S8 and the S8 Plus. Now in the US models, we are going to see the Qualcomm Snapdragon, the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 830 or the 835, most likely the 835, which is actually just announced three days ago, so yeah. This is also based on a 10 nanometer process. It also supports up to eight gigabytes of RAM. And for the GPU, we are expecting to see the Adreno 540, which is going to be a pretty big improvement coming from the 530 with up to two times the performance, so pretty similar to what we have on, on the Exynos side. And by the way, the Snapdragon 835 also supports Quick Charge 4.0. So faster quick charging coming to the S8, well, probably not. Finally, moving on to section number three, we have the camera. Told you this was going to be a pretty long video. Now, instead of the camera, the main feature is going to be a dual module camera. So a dual camera module, just like we have on the iPhone 7 Plus or the Huawei P9 or the LG G5, so it's going to look and perform really similar to those phones. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be an exclusive feature to the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. So on the larger model, just like we have with the iPhone 7 Plus, or if we will be getting this on both the S8 and the S8 Plus. However, that dual camera module is indeed going to come with some pretty nice features. So the main one, just like on the iPhone 7 Plus, would be able to zoom in without losing any quality. So you basically, on the iPhone 7 Plus, you have 2x optical zoom. So you actually can zoom in twice without losing any image quality. I don't have any details regarding what the zoom factor would be on the S8, but expect something between twice to three times optical zoom. Other changes to the dual camera module include improved noise reduction and also that really nice bulky or dev effect. Now moving on to the actual specs of the camera, on the back-facing camera we're expecting to see the exact same resolution, so 12 megapixel back-facing camera for both the camera modules. We also expect to see a larger aperture, so something like an f1.4 to f1.6. At the moment the S7 and the S7 Edge they have f1.7, which is actually the largest aperture for any smartphone at the moment. So that's also a reason why the S7 and the S7 Edge are so good in low light. We're also expecting to see a larger sensor, a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. So this combined with a larger aperture will most likely result in some amazing low light images. Now the front facing camera is definitely going to get some pretty big improvements. So at the moment we have a five megapixel front facing camera on the S7 and the S7 Edge. And interesting enough, even with the iPhone 7, we have a slightly larger megapixel count on the front facing camera. We have seven megapixels now. And with the S8, we are either expecting to see a nine megapixel front facing camera or a 12 megapixel one. And that's because this will allow you to shoot 4K video on the front facing camera. Now at the moment with the S7 and the S7 Edge, you can actually shoot Quad HD video so 1440p video, however on the iPhone, by the way, on the iPhone 7, you can only shoot 1080p, even though it has a slightly higher resolution, so 7 megapixels compared to 5. So yeah, 4K video recording is coming to the S8. For 4K video recording, by the way, you need 8.3 megapixels at least, so that's why 9 megapixels is also an option for the front facing camera. Now there are also some crazy rumors suggesting that the S8 will come with a 30 megapixel camera on the back. But no, that's, that's not happening. I don't see that happening because if you increase the megapixel count and you have such a small sensor, well, the pixels are going to be really, really small. So basically they will capture almost no light. So they will be really, really bad in low light. Now besides these, that really fast autofocus, so the face detection autofocus that we have on the S7 and the S7 Edge, that's obviously going to be there. However, on the iPhone 7 Plus, even though we have two camera lenses, two camera modules actually on the back, we only have optical image stabilization on the main one, so on the wide angle one. When you say that's not going to be the case, so we are expecting to see optical image stabilization on both lenses, on both camera modules of the camera. And finally, besides all these, also expect to see a really improved HDR mode on the S8. So on the Google Pixel, we have this HDR plus mode, which simply takes amazing shots. I mean, take a look at these images. These were taken with the Google Pixel and they look straight out of Photoshop, even though they haven't been edited. And if you remember that new ISP I was talking about before in the specs, and the Exynos 8895 chip, well, this also means that the S8 will have a lot more processing power towards that HDR Plus mode. So do expect to see something like the HDR Plus mode on the S8. Moving on to section number five, we have the software. So the S8 is going to come with Android 7.0 or Android N or Android Nougat. Nougat? Nougat? Nougat. Nougat, that, that's how we pronounce it in Romanian. But yeah, it might even come with Android 7.1, just like we have on the Google Pixel. Now on the Google Pixel, we also have this really unique exclusive feature called the Google Assistant. And Google has said that at the moment, this is an exclusive feature to the Google Pixel and the Google Pixel XL. Now I do see the Google Assistant making its way to other Android smartphones, but I don't see the Galaxy S8 being one of them and more about that soon. Now, in terms of the software, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is TouchWiz. So TouchWiz is basically Samsung's overlay on top of Android 7.0. And on the S7, TouchWiz has been pretty fluid compared to the S6, not even to mention the S5. However, it's not entirely fluid, it still lags. It actually lags 
quite a lot, to be honest. I mean, comparing this to my Google Pixel, this is a this is a massive difference when it comes to fluidity. I mean, honestly, after using the Google Pixel for a while, I couldn't even go back to my S7 Edge. So the next version of TouchWiz is definitely going to be more fluid than this one, with even less bloatware than we have now. So Samsung actually confirmed this. The next version of TouchWiz is going to be cleaner than this one. Because now, well, just take a look at this. We have two calendar apps, we have two calculator apps, we have two, actually three messages apps, actually four if you put the Google Allo into place. We also have two photos apps, two email apps, and I could go on a lot longer. So yeah, in terms of the software, do expect to see Android 7.0 or 7.1 among with a cleaner version of TouchWiz. Next up, number six, let's talk about all the special features that a Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus will come with. And there's quite a lot of things that I wanna cover here, so I'll try and make it as short as I can. Okay, so number one, we have VR. So as I mentioned before, the S8 is going to come with a 4K display, and VR is going to be a big major feature of the S8. So Samsung is apparently working on a new VR app. Now at the moment, Google has just introduced the Google Daydream app for the Google Pixel, which is basically a more premium version, a newer version of the Google Cardboard. Now Samsung already has the Gear VR app, but this app was actually made in collaboration with Oculus and Samsung's apparently working on a new VR app. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is a brand new app completely or if this is, or if this is a makeover of the Gear VR app. But yeah, VR is going to play a huge role in the S8. Number two, we have 3D Touch. So just like on the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 7, you can get menu and app shortcuts by simply pressing harder on the display. Now the Google Pixel has this function as well, by the way. However, instead of getting any pressure feedback, you actually hold longer on the icons. But the S8 is going to come with full 3D touch support, so a pressure sensitive display. This also means that they could essentially add a pencil, an S Pen, a new version of the S Pen to maybe the next note. Number three, we have Taptic Feedback. So on the new iPhone 7s, we have a Taptic Feedback engine, and with that, you can basically feel menu items, you can feel effects and messages. Whenever you do different actions, like setting an alarm, you can actually feel the Taptic engine responding back to you. So in a way, you can actually feel what you're doing on a display. So Taptic Feedback is also coming with the S8. Now, some of you have asked me if there's a new Gear VR coming, and I don't think that's the case. And that's because Samsung has recently unveiled a new Gear VR with the Note 7, which unfortunately is now dead. But yeah, with the new Gear VR, you can actually replace the connectors so you can choose USB-C for the Note 7 or micro USB like we had on the S7 and S7 Edge. That's most likely going to be the gear version that we are going to get with the S8. And Samsung will most likely keep the promotion in which if you pre-order an S8, you'll also get a free Gear VR. Number five, this is a pretty big one. So previously I said that I don't think that Google Assistant is coming to the S8. And number five is the reason why. So Samsung is actually working on their own voice assistant. So Samsung has recently purchased Viv Labs. And Viv Labs is a company formed by the creators, by the developers of Siri. So they're obviously working on a new voice assistant. So yeah, Viv is most likely going to be the actual name of Samsung's new voice assistant. Now the Viv assistant was already demoed to the public and Viv was actually content aware, so it could actually answer your questions based on what you've said before. Unlike Siri, which is pretty much limited to the question you're asking now. And Google Assistant, it can actually do this as well, so it knows what you've said before. So it seems that Viv is definitely going to be better than Siri and it might be even better than Google Google Assistant. Yeah, we'll see in a few months. Number six, this was a really expected one. We have USB-C. So yeah, micro USB is going to be replaced by USB-C, just like we had on the Note 7, which is now dead. And besides USB-C being reversible, the USB-C that's going to be inside the S8 is supposedly going to come with a USB 3.1 standard, Gen 1, not Gen 2. Gen, Gen 2 is up to 10 gigabits per second, Gen 1 is up to 5. Now, even though that seems really, really fast for such a connection for a mobile phone, don't expect to see insane transfer speeds on the S8. And that's because the internal storage is usually limited to about 200 to 300 megabytes per second. Now, speaking of USB-C, let's talk about a headphone jack. Is it actually going away or not? So yeah, there have been some reports suggesting that Samsung would remove the headphone jack from the S8, but honestly don't see this happening. Some have said that Samsung is going to add a proprietary port to the headphones so that you could only use Samsung headphones, but again, I don't I don't really see this happening. In the worst case scenario, Samsung would use USB-C as the audio connector, so you would get USB-C headphones in the box. But again, I don't see this happening. Number seven, we have wireless charging. So wireless charging is going to get some improvements. Apparently, Samsung is going to add two extra coils for wireless charging inside the S8, so you would get three coils instead of just one. Which basically means that the Samsung Galaxy S8 will not only charge faster, but you will also be able to position it pretty much anywhere you want on a charging pad, instead of having to align it perfectly in the middle. Number eight, quick charging is also going to get some improvements. Now, previously I mentioned that the Snapdragon 835 is actually coming 
with Quick Charge 4.0. However, since Samsung hasn't included Quick Charge 3.0 in the S7, even though the S7, the Snapdragon chip inside the S7, could support it, I don't see Samsung including Quick Charge 4.0 in the S8, unfortunately. However, do expect to see a slightly faster charging on the S8 than what we have on the S7. Possibly something similar to what we have on the OnePlus 3 and on the OnePlus 3 T with the dash charge quick charge. Number nine, the SD card expansion is still going to be there, so don't expect that to be going away anytime soon. Also, speaking of SD card expansion, unfortunately, adoptable storage, which was introduced in the Android Marshmallow, is not going to be supported in the S8. Adoptable storage basically merges the storage you have on the internal drive and the storage you have on the external storage, so the SD card. Number 10, we have the fingerprint reader that I was talking about in the design section included in the display panel itself. So this is going to be a pretty awesome feature. This combined with tactile feedback, haptic feedback, this is going to be one pretty futuristic phone. 11, we have a feature which was introduced with the Note 7, but since the Note 7 is dead, we don't have it anymore. That's of course the iris scanner. So the iris scanner on the Note 7 is going to come back with the S8. So you'll be able to unlock your S8 by simply using your retina and your eyes. That's pretty cool and actually works on the Note 7 and actually worked pretty well. Uh, the sensor was infrared, so it basically worked even if you had no light at all. 12, also from the Note 7, expect to see that night mode that we had with the Note 7 that's also coming in touch with on the S8. And finally, the last special feature that we're expecting to see, this is, this is a pretty interesting one. So on the back-facing camera, the ring that basically surrounds the camera, that's apparently going to be a full LED strip. What use would that have? Well, if you use the back-facing camera to take a selfie, that would actually light up when your face is in the center. So now you, you would be able to take selfies much better with the back-facing camera, although I don't see this being used that often, especially since the front-facing camera on the S8 is going to be even better than on the S7. But still, it's a pretty nice and interesting feature to have. Or they could simply add this reflective plastic lens like we had on the old Nokia 6288, if anyone remembers this phone, or many other phones that actually had this plastic reflective lens. Number seven, let's talk about the battery life. So on the S7 Edge, we have a 3600 mAh battery, which is actually one of the largest batteries we have on any flagship smartphone. So I was usually able to get through a full day of use. Now, when I first got this phone back in March, the battery life was simply insane. But now after so many software updates, the battery life got significantly worse than it was at the beginning. However, with moderate use, I can still make it through a full day of use. Okay, so what about the S8's battery? Now, I haven't actually seen any specific information when it comes to the battery life, on the S8. However, what we do know is that it is going to come with much thinner bezels and a completely new and thinner body. Now, this usually translates to less space inside the phone, and this translates to a smaller battery. Now, the new processor, the Exynos processor, the ADA95, is 30% smaller in terms of the actual size and also 40% more power efficient. So, this in theory should translate to not just more space inside a phone for the battery, but also more battery life overall. However, since the S8 will come with a 4K display, maybe the improvements in terms of CPU power consumption will be overlapped by that 4K display, so to say. So I personally do expect to see a battery life between 3500 and 3700 million bars. Hopefully these will be non-exploding versions. But yeah, overall, do you expect to see about the exact same battery life as on the S7 Edge? Maybe just a tiny bit worse. Moving on to sector number eight, we have the models and the capacity. So in terms of the models, I mentioned this before, we won't be seeing an S8 and an S8 Edge this time, but an S8 and an S8 Plus or an S8 Pro. The S8 Pro or the Plus, most likely the Plus, will be the 6.1 or the 6.2 inches display version. And by the way, in terms of the Note 8, I do believe that it's still coming later on this year, especially since we have that leaked codename N950. Now, since the S8 will also feature a pressure-sensitive display, as I mentioned before, Samsung might even introduce an S Pen at the event, and if this is the case, then they might remove the uh, the Note lineup completely. So we'll find out if the Note lineup is dead or alive in just a few months. Now, in terms of the actual capacity, in terms of the actual storage, we have two options. So one of them is 32 and 128, just like we have on the iPhone 7, and then the second one is 64 and 128. Now, usually Samsung likes to be one step ahead of the iPhone. So since on the iPhone we have 32 and 128, on the S8 we might have 64 and 128. So this is what I personally believe is going to be the storage for the S8. Keep in mind that you're also getting the microSD card expansion with the S8. So in the end, storage on the S8 is definitely not going to be a problem. Number nine, we have the release date. So when is the Samsung Galaxy S8 going to be unveiled? and released. Well, we're expecting to see this thing in stores in either late February or in mid to late March. Yeah, 2017, so it's just a few months away. Now, in terms of the announcement or the unveil, it's most likely going to be announced at MWC, so at the Mobile World Congress, which is going to be held 
uh, between February the 27th and I believe it's March the 2nd. Now some reports have hinted towards a Samsung event on February the 26th. 2 plus 6 equals 8. So yeah, the announcement is only 3 months away. And finally, moving on to the last section of this video, this, this is and was and still is a really long video. So section number 10, we have the actual price. How much is the S8 and the S8 Plus going to cost? Well, this is not going to be, unfortunately, it's not going to be a cheap phone. So it's definitely going to be more expensive than before because at the moment the S7 Edge is slightly cheaper than the iPhone 7 and the Google Pixel. And keep in mind that the S8, since it will come with that 4K display, well, 4K displays are not that easy to manufacture and they're also more expensive to manufacture. So yeah, the S8 will be much more expensive than the S7, possibly even more expensive than the iPhone 7 and the Google Pixel. Now just to give you an idea, the iPhone 7 Plus and the Google Pixel XL, the baseline 32GB model, that starts at £720 or $769. And then the 128GB model, that one is £820 and $869. Yeah, unfortunately in the UK, Brexit has really inflated prices. And now with the S8, in the best case scenario, we'll be getting the exact same prices as with the iPhone 7 Plus and the Google Pixel XL. So this means that the baseline 64GB model will be priced at £720 or $769 and then the high-end 128GB option would be priced at $820 or $879. And even though this is indeed pretty expensive, it's not that bad because, well, you're getting double storage, 64 gigabytes, and you're also getting that micro SD card expansion support. Now, the S8 Plus and the S8 Pro is going to be more expensive than the regular S8, so usually by about $100 or £100 in the UK. So yeah, these are most likely going to be the prices for the S8 and the S8 Plus. And yeah, hopefully Samsung will do exactly what they did with the S7 and the Note 7, that is, if you pre-order, when you pre-order, you actually get a Gear VR for free. That would be, that would be pretty cool. This would basically make the entire phone cheaper by about £70 or $80. And these were all the leaks and rumors in terms of the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. Now, there have been some even crazier rumors, such as that 30 megapixel camera that I mentioned before, or a built-in projector, or a 42 100 million parts battery and those are definitely not going to happen even though I do hope for a 42 million parts battery but yeah these are mostly wishes but yeah there you go this was a really long video I wanted to add everything into this video instead of having separate videos if you're new to the channel and you want to see more leaks and rumors episodes like this one then feel free to subscribe and by the way I've also done a video a leaks and rumors episode on the iPhone 8 so in case you haven't seen that it's a pretty cool video and if you if you have enjoyed this video if you've made it to this point of the video to the end you're definitely gonna love the iPhone 8 one as well. But other than that, let me know in the comments which one of you was epic enough to make it to the end of this video. This was a really, really long video, so thank you to each and every single one of you who made it to this point, to the end of this video. And also feel free to give this video a huge like if you have enjoyed it. it. Took a really, really long time to make, so all of your feedback is really appreciated. Also feel free to follow me on Twitter at Zenoftech for more tech updates there, and more Samsung Galaxy S8 updates there as well. And you can ask me any questions regarding the S8 or the iPhone 8 there as well. But what do you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy S8. Who's excited for the S8 and what are your top three features that you would like to see in the next Samsung Galaxy phone? Oh and by the way don't forget to enable notifications on my channel on both desktop and mobile on mobile by simply clicking on the bell icon next to my channel so that you're notified whenever I upload a brand new epic video. But yeah this was pretty much it for this video so thank you all for watching this video again huge thanks to every single one of you that made it to the end of this video. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Son of Tech signing out. Cheers.